Doris! 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 Were you shouting? Was I what? I've had the plaster off in three places. I wish you'd leave the kitchen door open when you know I'm not well. I wish we lived in a bungalow. <laughs> now what? It's moved. <laughs> moved? It, it's, it's here now. It's travelled all up me back, across the top of me neck and into me shoulder blade. Just there. Oh! <laughs> what do you think it is? It's a pain, isn't it? Well, of course it's a pain. Hell's bells, I ought to know it's creasing me. The point is, how am I going to cure it? Well, you won't cure it by dragging me upstairs every five minutes. All that's doing is giving me one. <laughs> now, come on, I'm very busy. What is it you want? Well, a bit of sympathy wouldn't go amiss. I'm a very sick man, Doris, don't you know? I should think the Earl Street knows by now. <laughs> Jack, I'm doing my best for you, love. I've brought you breakfast up, I've brought you the paper up, I've filled your hot water bottle twice. Now, what more do you want? Booper! Well, certainly don't want you standing over me while I'm writhing in agony. Jack, it's Monday morning, love, and I've got problems of me own. Well, I'm one, aren't I? And don't I know it. But while you're sitting here feeling sorry for yourself, I'm downstairs with a kitchen full of dirty washing and my twin tub's gone wonky. <laughs> so come on, love, what is it you want? I want the doctor. You can't have the doctor. Doctors don't turn out for aches and pains. You've got to be nearly dying. And who says I'm not dying? <laughs> for all you know, this could be my swan song. <laughs> Honestly, Doris, I feel really groggy. Well, of course you feel groggy. Anybody would feel groggy who spent Saturday afternoon behind a girl mouth standing there with no Mac on in the pouring rain. Rubbish! Yes, you said they were on Saturday when they got beef for nil. <laughs> we was robbed. Mm. How long are you planning to stay off work? I thought you said you were indispensable. Oh, I shall clock on when I feel fit, and not before. I'm not making myself a martyr for that mob. You get no better thought of. Won't you need a sick note? At last! You've caught up with me. Go down to the phone box and ring the doctor and tell him you don't like the look of me. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. <laughs> the way you keep dragging me up here every five minutes, I'm beginning to hate the sight of you. Now, what am I going to tell him you've got wrong with you? Oh, I don't know. Tell him anything. Tell him you think it's rigor mortis. <laughs> the way this shoulder's seizing up, it soon will be. Well, anyway, you'll have to wait until the man's come to fix me washer. You know what these repair men are like? If you're not standing behind the door waiting for them, they're back off in the van and up the road like grease lightning. Are you trying to tell me that I've got to play second fiddle to a washing machine? Jack, look, with the pile of dirty washing I've got to tackle this morning, you're lucky to be in the orchestra. He's here. Oh, when you come up again, love, bring me my next week's football coupon. I can be sorting out my bankers. <laughs> Oh, good morning. Uh, Mrs. Lucy? Yes, have you come about me washer? Uh, amongst other things. Oh, it's through here in the kitchen. <laughs> this is it, Mr. Uh... Ah, your washer? Yes, it won't agitate. <laughs> it won't? No, I've filled it up, added me new blue whiteness, switched on, nothing. Oh, interesting. Um, do you mind if I make notes? No, make what you like. And what did you do then? I just picked up a cup and saucer. Ah, <laughs> uh, I know. Um, when you find it wasn't working. Oh, that's when I sent for you. For me? Yes. I hope you're not going to tell me we need a new one, because we haven't finished the instalments on that one yet. Uh, Mrs. Lindsay, I'm afraid we're at cross purposes. Perhaps I'd better explain who I am and what I'm here for. Well, as long as it doesn't go down on your timesheet. Only the last chap who called charged me two pounds for turning out and he only fitted a fourpenny fuse. <laughs> Mrs. Lipsy, do you remember coming out of a supermarket about six weeks ago and being stopped by a lady interviewer to answer questions on household management? Yes, I remember it very well. It was the last time I got a bag of sugar. <laughs> Let me just put that down. That's vital. Now, the, uh, the point is, Mrs. Lipsy, that my firm has processed the results from 4,000 interviews 
And I am delighted to tell you that our computer has picked you out as the ideal average housewife. And is that good, is it? It's remarkable. In fact, it's incredible. We've checked you out against every known criteria. And of all the average housewives in Britain, we can now positively state, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you are the most average. <laughs> I'm not so sure whether I like that. But Mrs. Lindsay, you're a living phenomenon. Am I? For years we've been searching for you, and now, at long last, we've found you. Isn't it funny? I didn't even know I was missing. <laughs> Needless to say, it will simplify our methods of marketing. By studying your own domestic requirements, we shall know that there are literally millions of other housewives who will want to follow your lead. Well, there's going to be some very crowded phone boxes. I'm just going to ring for the doctor. <laughs> All I need is your permission to move in so that I can keep you under constant observation for the next seven days. You mean you want to move in here and live with us? You'd hardly notice me, Mrs. Livesey. I'd be but a fly on the wall. You'd get swatted. <laughs> My husband never misses with a folded newspaper. Uh, does this mean you don't use an aerosol spray killer? No. Hmm? You can't stand the smell. He says it gets in flagging faster than the flies. <laughs> Fascinating. You see, a simple response like that from you could change the whole concept of pesticide packaging. Then what about it then, Mrs. Livesey? May I move in? Well, I'll have to talk it over with my husband. I've got him in bed at the moment with a bad back. What with him off work and me with a wonky washer. It's been what you might call not my day. <laughs> Excellent. This is exceeding my wildest dreams. To be able to observe you coping with such contingencies will be an absolute boon. Um, Perhaps you'd have a word with your husband right away. Well, I'll have to ring for the doctor first. Can you wait here in case the repairman calls? Delighted. Just let me note the time. <clears throat> well, I'll just pop out then. Is that you, Doris? Doris! Doris! <laughs> Hello? My name's Stella. Your wife sent for the doctor. Who did you say? The doctor. Oh, good. Can you come up? It didn't take you long to get here, then. <laughs> uh, your staircase has 14 steps. It conforms to the average. I, uh, I somehow knew it would. Yeah. Well, uh, I've got this pain, you see. Oh, dear. It's murdering me. See, if I try to do that... See, oh! Yeah. <laughs> it's like a knife. Well, I shouldn't try to do that if I were you. <laughs> You'll hurt yourself. <laughs> It's absolute agony, honestly. I couldn't possibly go to work with it. Uh, tell me, out of curiosity, how many working days would you say you've lost through illness through the past year? Oh, not many. It takes a lot to get me down. Well, um, what would you say? Uh, between 12 and 14? Oh, at the most. Uh, that's average, all right. You know, it really is quite remarkable. Uh, do you want me to take my pyjama jacket off? <laughs> uh, what for? Well, I thought you might like to examine it. Yes, well, actually, it might be rather revealing. <laughs> Cotton and nylon fibre. <laughs> Here you are again, you see? Plum in the middle of the middle price range. I, um, I take it that you leave your wife to buy your pyjamas for you. Oh, I do, yes. And would I be right in assuming that you have two pairs, one on, one in the wash? Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Is it? The perfect mean average all the way through. You know, Mr. Livesey, you are married to a truly remarkable woman. You can say that again. I could open your eyes from top to bottom. Oh, there it comes! <laughs> oh, what are you going to do for me? Is it, it, is it no better? It's murdering me. I must have treatment for it. I'm just wondering, could you have caught a chill? Very likely. Well, shouldn't you put your pyjama jacket on? You'll catch another. <laughs> Look, 
Are you going to give me a sick note or are you not? A what? A sick note for being off work. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry, Mr. Livesey. I couldn't give you a sick note. You need to be a doctor. Well, what <laughs> do you think you are? I think I'm a consumer research investigator. Well, what are you doing in my bedroom? <laughs> well, you called me up, remember? Your wife will tell you all about me. Doris! Hello? Who's this bloke in our bedroom? Just a minute. Oh, this had better be good. Coming in here, pricing my pyjamas. I was really, <laughs> really cross-checking with the haberdashery index. In fact, it's your wife I'm interested in. Oh, yeah? I'll soon sort you out, mate. I'll have you. I could use all the help I can get. I've rung the doctor. He says he's too busy to call today, but he'll come tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow's no good. I'll probably be better by tomorrow. Yes, he said you would. That's why he's not coming today. <laughs> Ain't it nice, eh? They dock all that money out of your wages for your national health stamp and the best the doctor can do is to come and see you when you get better. What kind of a racket's that? I'm only telling you what he said. Well, tell me this then. Who's this fella? Oh, this is Mr. Uh, I don't think you told me a name, did you? Stamp. Russell Stamp. He only wants to be a fly on the wall. He'll be a grease pot on the ceiling if he's not very careful. <laughs> What's his game? He wants to study me. He what? He says I'm average. Well, we're not here to dispute that. <laughs> but how's he found out? Uh, Susie, I think I can probably uh, put you best in the picture by asking you to take a look at this graph here. Now, imagine, if you will, that all these spots represent 4,000 housewives. And this spot here, dead centre, <laughs> with the red ring round, that... <laughs> that is Mrs. Livesey. A likely story. It's true, Jack. I've been picked out by a computer. You're trying to tell me that that, that spot is my wife? As ever was. How'd she get there? We caught her coming out of a supermarket. <laughs> Six weeks ago. Don't you remember me telling you all about that woman who wants to know all about our home habits? No, I don't. Yes, you do. You went mad cos I told her you went to bed with your socks on. <laughs> Here, you've not got me down there, have you? No, 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 no. These are all housewives. Uh, the point is, uh, Mr. Livesey, that from the answers which your wife gave us, we have established her as the absolute optimum norm. Now, there you are, you see. What did I tell you? You will keep opening your big mouth. Oh, that'll be the man to fix me washing. Uh, Mr. Lucy, whilst, uh, whilst we're alone in your bedroom... Yeah, what about it? <laughs> there is uh, one rather delicate question about your wife's domestic activities which I can only ask of you, her spouse. We, uh, we call it the compatibility rating. You leave no stone unturned, do you? <laughs> well, after all, the marital bed is the cornerstone of a well-ordered household. So perhaps you could um, categorise your wife's uh, prowess as... A... All right, all right. You don't have to draw it for me. Good. So how would you describe her? Oh, average. <laughs> Very average. Of course. It's what I expected. It's not what I expected. <laughs> Carry on. Did I do something out of the ordinary? No, perfectly normal. Though, if I may say so, Mrs. Livesey, you're a lovely chipper. Thank you very much. There can't be many women who can get 23 evenly matched chips out of one King Edwards. Well, of course, I have had a lot of experience. Jack is a devil for the French fried. How about the children? Oh, he loves the children. <laughs> I'm sure he does, but um, do the children like chips? Well, Mandy's not too keen, but Jeremy's a real glutton. 
Mind you, he takes after his dad in lots of ways. Does he? Yes. We've tried to break him of it, but the doctor said it's ingrained. <laughs> I, um, I notice you don't use a crinkler. Pardon? A crinkler uh, for cutting chips. Oh, you mean one of those gadgets that make a mm. wavy line? Oh, no. Jack won't eat crinkle chips. He says it diverts the vinegar. <laughs> What a fascinating theory. Would you like to count those? I can't. Yes, sure enough, 23. That's my Mrs. Average. How do you do it? Well, suppose it's just a knack. I'm just going to get me chip pan out. Do you want to measure me fat? <laughs> Might as well take a reading. <clears throat> You know, Mrs. Lizzie, you really are being very cooperative. Well, I'm just beginning to realise how important this all is. You see, Mr. Stanhope, if I'm as average as you say I am, that makes me rather special, doesn't it? Without question. In terms of the commonplace, you have no equal. And I mean, it is a fact, isn't it? What I do today will affect what all other average women do tomorrow. Precisely. In one single unit, Mrs. Lizzie, you are the total embodiment of national mass mediocrity. <laughs> well, it isn't every woman who can lay claim to that, is it? And I mean, I've felt for some time now I've been in a rut, and this could be my means of getting out of it. Ah, oh, oh, well now, uh, that might defeat the object of the exercise. You see, it's because you're in a rut that you're who you are. And uh, quite frankly, Mrs. Livesey, as far as we're concerned, you're in the best place. <laughs> but this isn't forever, surely. Household drudgery, cleaning and washing, slaving over a hot stove all day. Is this all I've got to look forward to? I tell Mrs. Lucy, you're the perfect average housewife. You must live up to your own standards. Otherwise, you'll ruin all our calculations. Sorry! There he goes. Spot on. You know, it's uncanny the way he spaces his hollers. <laughs> Five minutes to the second. I'd better pop up and see what he wants. Yes. By word, it's all go, isn't it? Will you be coming upstairs with me all week? Oh, yes, I must. You, uh, you might do something quite vital. I probably will, but I don't want you there when I'm doing it. <laughs> don't worry, Mrs. Lizzie. I shall keep a discreet distance. After you. Doris! Now what? You know you've let me up water bottle go cold. Jack, you are the limit, love. Couldn't you have waited until I brought your lunch up? No, I couldn't. I need the heat on me back. It's getting worse, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if I pulled a muscle. Oh, I should think that that's very unlikely. Well, I want your opinion. I'll ask for it. <laughs> Is this fella a fixture? Jack, you are rude. Mr Stanhope's only doing his job. If he doesn't follow me around, how will he know what I get up to? It's what he's getting up to that's worrying me. <laughs> Oi, Lazarus. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? I'm off to the bathroom to observe Mrs. Livesey. You take one step along that passage and I'll separate you from your breath. <laughs> I dear Mr. Livesey, you're clearly misunderstanding my motives. You really must try to appreciate that this innovation will reduce marketing expenditure and thereby cut the cost of living. I don't care if it turns Great Britain into a land of milk and honey. You are not following my missus into the bathroom. <laughs> Well, no matter. I can ask her the relevant questions. And if I'm within earshot, you'll get some relevant answers. <laughs> well, what did you just write down then? When? Just then, when I said you couldn't go in the bathroom. Well, nothing very significant. I was merely crossing my T's and dotting my I's. Well, you just watch it or I'll cross them for you. <laughs> right. Let's see if this will improve your temper. Oh, careful. <laughs> Is that better? Oh, merciful release. <laughs> well, what we got for lunch, pet? Individual steak pie and chips. With peas? With peas. Lovely. Frozen. All oh, right, we don't need the pod numbers. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got to follow, love? Rice pudding. Oh, no, Doris, not rice pudding, not again. Is that all you can make, rice pudding? Well, I've been very busy, love. The average British housewife cooks rice pudding between 64 and 68 times every year. Isn't life a funny thing? I bet his mother adores him. Now, look here, Jack. 
You're not giving Mr. Stanhope a fair chance. You've done nothing but complain about him ever since he arrived. Now I'm warning you, if you don't start minding your manners, you'll make your own rice puddings from now on. How about that? How's that for sauce? How does that tally with your recipe for a happy home? Perfectly. It's widely accepted that the average housewife has to contend with an over-argumentative husband. But that's only the tip of the ice. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Jack! What's the matter? Me chip pan. She put the gas on at 12.43. You will excuse me. Never in a million years. Doris! <laughs> the next time you fill my hot water bottle, make sure you screw the top on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, four minutes flat. Pardon? The Trevec, the living room carpet. How does that rate? Uh, that's about average. <laughs> it is quite fantastic, Mrs. Livesey. I've been following you around the house all day, and you haven't put a foot wrong. Oh, except when I was mopping the kitchen out and I stepped back into me bucket. <laughs> At 327. Well, that was quite a moment. Well, um, what now, Mrs. Livesey? Well, let's see. The children are in bed. I've done my ironing. I've put the milk bottles out. I think I'll make a cup of coffee. Instant? Right away. <laughs> make coffee. 9.43. Oh, no. You got the no vacancies sign up in the window, I hope. <laughs> I, uh, I just thought I'd have a little walk down the club, love. Yes. Isn't it funny how the pain goes an hour before closing time? <laughs> it's not funny at all. As a matter of fact, it's very serious. I'm a physical wreck. I just had to pull myself together and make the effort. And from the soaking I got from that hot water bottle, I'll be lucky if I don't get double pneumonia. What time will you be home? Oh, I won't be late, Pet. What's late? Late. It's late. Always has been as long as I've known it. Well, come on, then. I want a definite time. Well, I can't give you a definite time. Not for the minute. I just won't be late, that's all. And if you don't know what late is, why don't you ask Confucius there? I'm sure he'll tell you. Well, don't expect us to wait up for you. Us? <laughs> Who's us? Well, I presume when I decide to go to bed, Mr Stanhope will do the same. That is the correct procedure, isn't it, Mr Stanhope? Oh, yes, yes. I shall retire as soon as I've fulfilled my function. <laughs> your function? Just exactly what is your function? Because quite honestly, I'm having very serious doubts. Well, he's already explained all that, Jack. Mr. Stanhope is charting the everyday habits of the average housewife. And what proof has he got that you are average? There's no possible doubt about that, Mr. Livesey. Socially, economically, characteristically, her curves all cross at the same point. And on top of which, she has the prime requirement of a husband and two children. Two children? One of each. Right. Get your coat on, love. You're coming with me down the club. With you? I'm not being seen in a working men's club with you, Jack Livesey. Oh, yes, you are. And that's not the only club you're going to be seen in, either. <laughs> what do you mean? By the time he wakes up in the morning, you'll be in another. I'll spoil your average for you. 